right? This is a year's worth of growth. When I first started doing Selena's, when I first started doing Selena's hair, I was trying to convince her to actually go natural. And she was thinning in the top, and I started telling her the only way that she was going to get the length that she wanted and to be able to grow her hair out was to actually wear her hair natural. And she didn't want to break, um, but she finally gave in, and she started wearing her hair natural. And this is a year's worth of growth. Her back was up here. The middle was, was like this long. Yes, her That's middle it. was this long. Her middle it is broken off this long natural. now. And wow. this is what no heat does for you ladies. This is really important. If you want to see length, if you want to be able to see the fruits of your labor, you have to stay away from the heat so much. And that's why I promoted the idea of just straightening your hair once or twice a month at the most and in between doing protective twisted out styles that can actually prepare you to be able to grow out and keep your natural curl pattern to the ends. It's very, very important. When you start seeing straights on your hair, you've known you've done too much heat. Your hair should have its even curl pattern from roots to ends. If you start seeing straights, it's just like a relaxer damage without the chemical. Because at that line of demarcation where the straight and the natural meet, when you're going to comb through, when your hair is in its most vulnerable stage, that's when you're going to see all of your breakage. Or during your blow dry process, as you saw me tapping my brush out, that's where you're going to see a lot of the shedding. But this is wonderful length all the way down here on her back. You see me still stretching this hair. This is still caught in there. Absolutely, there is complete difference. It's more direct heat when you're using it with a blow dryer. The problem is that when you sit under the dryer, if you're sitting under the dryer all the time, like when you're getting molded with gels and mousses and things, those are alcohols. And then you also have other things going on. If you've gotten relaxers, you know, that's calcium deposits that are left, left under your skull, they typically will make your hair fall out. Lime deposits are not healthy under your scalp, and any calcium-based relaxer is going to leave them. If you ever notice with a relaxer, your hair tends to feel a little bit brittle, and that's why you feel like you need that feeling of a conditioner afterwards to put on your hair to keep that dry, tangly feeling out from being, you know, combed through. You don't want to pull through it because it's always breaking, so you feel like you need that extra conditioner to be able to get through it. Well, that also, you putting that under the dryer, wrapping it up, defats your scalp. And you'll feel your scalp get tighter and tighter and tighter. You gotta think that heat is concentrated on the top of your head. So when it's in its natural stage and you're under the dryer with conditioner, you got all this cushion to block that heat from getting down. So you're not having such a direct heat. But when you're poker straight and the heat is getting down in here, it's not healthy. So 20 to 30 minutes under the dryer with a conditioning treatment is not going to hurt you if you're doing this when you're doing your maintenance. But when you're molding it and putting on alcohol, it's going to dry you out even more defat your scalp and using chemicals and you're heating up whatever's left on um, when you're putting a relaxer on uh, you are actually taking your uh, hair to its most fragile stage that's the main thing and then the other thing is that you're not you're putting a chemical on your body so when I put something on my skin just like any lotion I put on the surface of my skin and in two minutes it's, it's not there anymore it doesn't mean the lotion is not on my skin it just means it's absorbed into my body and when you put on a relaxer, it's sitting on your skin, but it's also absorbed into your body. Your skin is the largest breathing organ of your body, and it absorbs everything. So when you're putting a relaxer into your scalp, you're also putting it through your bloodstream. So you have to be conscious as the natural, or any other chemical, any other product that you might put on your hair. It's being absorbed into your body. So as a natural, you want to make sure that you're reading labels and you understand your ingredients and how they affect the healthiness of you and, and your you know, you could be taking medication. It might have an adverse reaction to that. So we're going to work on the other side. So three minutes for the side. Maybe five minutes because we had to do this first little quadrant. But now we're still three minutes in. Added on two. And now we're going to go into this one. We'll come back with the end result. We just finished out on our blow dry at nine minutes, 48.3 seconds with the rust brush. Um, from this point, I'm going to go over her edges. I've attached my Wooly Morrow comb attachment comes with little plastic pieces that allows it to fit on any dryer. If your dryer is too small, it comes with a couple of attachments that you can add in. So I have one on the inside, one on the outside, and it has a little split right here that it can go onto any of them. And then I push it on. If you need to get it wider, if your blow dryer is wider, then there's a little 
attachment right here, you stick a screwdriver in and loosen it up and then tighten it back on. Putting it on. As I'm going through, I'm going to grab her hair and give it a little tension and then pull through, which allows you to stretch the curl pattern out and then put the heat on it to straighten. While I'm blow drying, it's really important that you let the, the base of your head or the scalp of your head run along the curve of this dryer. You don't want to stick the teeth into the scalp. You'll kill somebody's scalp doing that. And you don't want to point the heat directly into their head because you'll burn them. So if you hold it and you just glide along and feel the scalp rubbing on here, you're not going to burn your scalp. Okay, if you notice, you don't have to worry about pressing out any edges with um, straightaway souffle or pressing out any of the roots. She's straight. So we'll just go through with just a once over with the flat iron. She does not need to be pressed first. I know a lot of stylists will press the hair first with the flat iron and then curl it. It's not necessary. Just give the base a little bit of an extra slower heat and drag it to the ends and there's your curl. Just one over and the problem is is when you use a ceramic iron once you put the heat on it you've actually kind of sealed the curl pattern in. So if I was to straighten it first I'm actually saying I want my hair straightened, not curly. And when you go to put the flat iron back into it, it doesn't make the curl pattern the same anymore. So it's very hard to put a curl in after you've already straightened it. That one little turn at the base allows it to have some body. If you see it's not laying straight on her head. If I want it to be flatter, like when I get to the top, if I don't want that much volume in my curl, all I'll do is smooth it out like this just a little and just kind of bring it straight down. And it won't be that bump that lifts it up and it leaves it flatter instead of the body.